Welcome to our second onboarding video in our Stock Volatility Box onboarding series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Live Scanner. The Live Scanner is where I think you're going to spend most of your time and certainly where I spend most of my time. The scanner is far more powerful than anything you'll find in Thinkorswim or any other brokerage platforms, and we've designed it specifically for volatility traders with volatility in mind. Now let's go through the scanner slowly, step by step, so you understand how to make sense of this information and how to use it to find trades that work for your trading style. Now that's the key concept, which I will keep repeating time and time again, your trading style. That's because it's important to know what is your trading style. Are you the kind of person who's comfortable with things like breakouts? I know it sounds really nice to have things like buy stop or sell stop orders, but is that something you really do? Or are you more of a limit order type of trader? Do you like to do things like buy the dip? Or are you comfortable buying at 52 week highs? These are all questions you must ask yourself. And once you ask yourself that question, you'll then be able to use all of these filters to find exactly the setup you're looking for. Now let's start with some simple examples. So if you're relatively new to trading, you'll find one of the most common phrases trend is your friend until it ends. So you want to trade in the direction of the trend. Now, how do you do that? Well, you'll see there's one column here which says market stage or stage rather, and that's short for market stage. And this ties back to what we saw inside of the dashboard. If you remember, we had four different market stages available. Acceleration, which is when the market's very clearly bullish. Accumulation, which is when we're taking a bit of a pause or a breather, but still overall bullish deceleration, which is strong bearish, and distribution, which is more of a mixed bag, uh, a little bit more tilted to the bearish side. And you'll see those same four stages here, except this time it's for every single stock or ETF, every symbol that we're scanning. So this gives you an idea of what is that trend. Now, if you think about it, for a market in which you might be, say, having a bullish trend of accumulation or acceleration, more likely you would like to be long in that particular market than short. So that is the first filter that I think is one that's the easiest way to get started. If you want to trade in the direction of the trend, open up the filters by clicking this filter icon, come down to the trend analysis tab, and there you can click trend following. And instantly you'll now have trades in which you're long, in which your uh, accumulation or acceleration for your market stages, or a short where you have a market stage of deceleration or distribution. Now, if you're a little bit more of an advanced trader, then you'll find the counter trend to also be useful. The reason the counter trend is a nice filter, I know it's a little bit counterintuitive, and you'll see the string of stop hits here, which is something to expect, lower probabilities given you're fighting the trend. But oftentimes here, you can find some skewed risk to reward setups, which I think are really nice, especially when you combine it with the relative volatility. So that takes us to the next column, which is the daily swing column. The daily swing column puts in perspective today's volatility in comparison to the relative volatility for the past 30 days. So this first number you see here will tell you what is today's volatility, and the second number tells you what is the typical volatility. So let's use uh, the S&P 100 here for a list of more recognizable names. And let's take a look at Kraft Heinz. That was one that appeared here. Kraft Heinz, long side setup while we have a market stage of deceleration. So why might you be looking at that long side setup, you're asking? Well, in the case of Kraft Heinz, we know we have a mature trend here. We've been in this stage for quite some time. We take a look at what is today's volatility compared to relative volatility. And this green label tells us that we're very much in line with that volatility. Now you'll see this says stop hit, and oftentimes that might lead you to freak out a little bit. Don't. Stop hit simply means that we have tagged the outer edge of our volatility box clouds. So let me show you what that means. If I come in to Kraft Heinz here, stop hit just means that we went outside of the clouds here. Now you'll notice that oftentimes that's a much better entry. That's a place where you have risk to reward skewed on your side. So stop hit more times than not is actually a filter that I like to use to find new trade setups, especially when the open trades just aren't cutting it for me. Stop hit is a great place 
to find some active setups that might be breaching the outer edge of the models. So don't be thinking stop hit is something you discount. It's oftentimes a place to find new opportunities. Now you can also filter down with the models here if you wanted to focus on just the daily models. And if you looked at Intel now, back to the concept of relative volatility, you looked at Intel, you'll notice that Intel stands out with a yellow label versus everything else because we had three times, almost three times, our typical volatility today inside of Intel. And if we were to open up Intel on the charts by clicking that symbol, we can see that volatility very clearly. The aggressive models essentially compressed. And even if you switch to the conservative models, you'll see that towards that final hour, we ended up breaking outside of those models very decisively. So very clear high volatility inside of Intel. And we see that with this greater than usual volatility. And this is printing throughout the day, not just at the end of the day, not just with the final information. Intel also uh, extended mature trend and same thing with UNH. So these are all places where we think this trend is likely to exhaust. And you saw how nice that setup was inside of Kraft Heinz. So that's how you can find counter trend trades. And again, don't be intimidated by this quote unquote stop hit. I'll find a better way to name it. But for right now, just know that stop hit is a great place to find some new setups as well. Now we come back to all today. I'm going to go back to all of our setups. So we can discuss the other columns and other ways to find setups. So, so far, you've understood how to find setups in which you're trading with the trend. You have found advanced setups in which you're counter trend trading, but I've given you reasons why you want to be counter trend. Again, to go over those reasons, mature trend, one in which you're looking for that to exhaust, extreme RSI values, stack that with things like layering in relative volatility, and suddenly you can find some nice setups like Kraft Heinz. Now, beyond trend, you can also use things like the volatility, but one other neat feature that we've added in is this score column on the far right hand side. Now, the score column, I'll leave a link to documentation which breaks down the exact formula, but during live market hours, especially when the market's moving, you'll oftentimes find that there's a lot of signals, and it's a quick way to rank those symbols. You'll see there's a number column, this gives you a rank. And that ranks the score. So it's easy to now know what is the best setup and what is a poor setup. Now, as part of this setup, you'll see that there's also a component here called win percentage and EV. EV is expected value for this trade. Win percentage represents the win based off of the actual volatility box models. And keep in mind, the stop hit would be counted as a stop. That would not be counted as a win. So even though you see a stop hit here, you'll see Adobe will change the percentages as we go on. And we're automatically now adapting and finding the best strategies that work for us. So the win percentage along with the EV are used as factors to give us the score. So no longer do you need to now pay attention to individual win percentages, try and comb through what we had before, which were four or maybe even uh, up to eight different setups for each symbol. You have just one clean setup. Know which percentage you want to pay attention to. Know that the expected value of that strategy is positive and focus on other things like what is the volatility today? What is the trend? Is this a mature trend? And are there any signals that you want to pay attention to? So that now takes us to the signal column. The signal column are really just me trying to call out observations that I think you may want to pay attention to for whichever that setup is. So for example, if we're seeing a short setup and on the previous bar, we had a large upper wick, then that's something we want to call out. And I think this is easier to see inside of Thinkorswim. So if we took a look at Adobe's chart here and you take a look at yesterday's candle, you see this large upper wick. That's why this large upper wick is what I'm calling out on our signal column. So given that we have a short side setup and we had a large upper wick yesterday, we know that there were bears yesterday. There were certainly bears hanging around and we're looking for those same bears to be hanging around today. That's the overall idea for the large upper wick. Same thing for the upper wick. It's just if we don't have a decisively large, which is greater than three times the lower or the other side's wick, then we'll just see a common upper wick. So if we have greater than three times a wick, that's what I'm calling large. Now, other signals that you'll see, which don't have this cyan background, are these gray background ones. And those are market pulse signals. So for example, you'll see things like a reversal, 
You'll see things like the second pullback. You'll see things like a momentum cross. And you should also see second pullback. Let me walk you through exactly what that is. So let's use Eli Lilly here, which gave you a second pullback. I'm going to load in the chart of Eli Lilly. Second pullback is simply what you see right here, which is a pullback to the market pulse line. And second pullback indicates that this is the second time that it's happening in the trend. The first time it happens is when you'll see the first pullback. When you see momentum, that's after you've had the first pullback and we now have momentum starting to change. And you'll also see reversal, which is when the trend changes for the first time. So for example, inside of Gilead, we can see that the trend, this bullish trend, changed six days ago. Let's go inside of Thinkorswim. I'll load in Gilead. We'll load in the scalper just so I can see the market pulse. And you'll see that our market stage recently shifted six days ago. And that's why we have this long side bias. We're looking to be happy buyers of this new trend reversal. If we come into an example of this momentum uh, trade here, that's IBM. Let's come into IBM here. And you'll see that we had the momentum cross just a few days ago with the cyan dot. That tells us that the three EMA crossed above the eight EMA. We had momentum on our side and we have that as a bullish bias here, a bullish reason why we would want to be long. Now, all of these columns that I've talked about. So for example, the market stage here, Say you're a long only trader, you prefer buying the dip for the most part. Simply come in and you're mostly looking at what acceleration and accumulation trends. And you might even layer on something like trend following to now know exactly where you have the long side setups. So this is what you really want to focus on, especially if you might not be interested in shorts at all. Another way that you can filter this list down even further is by changing the watch list. You'll see by default, I'm looking at all symbols, but you can also come inside of watch lists here and create your own watch list of the symbols that you care about. So you might say something like, hey, these are my liquid tickers that I care to trade, create this new watch list. And now you might load in say Apple, Microsoft, whatever else you have. And if I was to come back to our scanner now, refresh the scanner, we'll see liquid tickers is now a watch list that I have available. And I can take a look at just the trades inside of each of those with my filters loaded on. See if I had any trades inside of Apple and Microsoft, which I didn't today. So nothing on the scanner, a very focused list. If I come back to the S&P 100, you'll find more symbols. So that's a very easy way to be able to expand or narrow down your watch list. Now, before we wrap up this video, let me walk you through the final bit of filters and settings that you'll want to pay attention to. We have some basic filters, which I think are uh, obvious, but I'll walk through them. You can filter based off of price, price buckets. You can filter based off of long or short. So you might want just longs. You might even be looking at just shorts. You combine this with what the dashboard was telling us with our market bias. And all of a sudden you can now find just the setups in the direction of the overall trend or the overall market. Swing size, we talked about, you could focus on just the large swings or just the small swings. If you focus on the small swings, we already spent a good deal of time on trend analysis. If you, for some reason, wanted to change the performance filters, you could go ahead and do that. I don't really change or fuss around with the performance filters. I leave those as is. And the market stage, I like to let the trend analysis do a lot of the filtering for me. Now in the top right hand corner, you'll find some more settings that you have available for you to pick and choose from. The first one I already talked about is the watch list. The watch list is where you can change what is the number of symbols you want to focus on and what are the markets you want to focus on. The second is the market state or the state of these trades. By default, we're looking at open trades. If you want to analyze after the market ends, take a look at all today. And during the market hours, if there's nothing on the open that catches your eyes, go to the stop hit and you'll often find some nice setups there. To the right of this, you'll find the same dark mode, light mode setting option. You'll also find a settings icon option, which opens up the ability to change which columns you see on your scanner. If for some reason you don't care to see, for example, let's say the expected value, just click that, it will hide that column, save changes, and you no longer see the EV percentage. If you wanted to remove, let's say the win percentage too, maybe you don't care about either of those columns. 
This now makes your scanner a lot cleaner and working for you. If you want to add those back in, just click them. You'll find them back here at the bottom. You can drag and drop. And you're all set with those columns back inside of your scanner. Now, finally, I want to show you how you can view what these models look like. There's two ways you can do that. One is by clicking the symbol, which I've been doing and showing you throughout this video, which will open up the charts page. We're going to go through this in more detail in the next video, but for right now, I want to show you what these checkboxes are. These checkboxes allow you to generate thinkorswim indicator files directly from the live scanner instead of needing to jump inside of the indicator generator, which we'll talk about in two videos forward. So if you wanted to skip that step, simply check all of the symbols that you wanted to analyze a little bit further. Maybe you want to see those models inside of your thinkorswim chart, click those checkboxes, and then click generate studies. This will download four files onto your platform, especially if you selected all four. You can change that here if you want just the daily or the hourly models, or just the aggressive or the conservative models. So you can pick and choose based off of what you want. If you want all four, by default, it will download all four. To import those into Thinkorswim, simply come inside of your settings icon here, click import, and navigate to the folder in which your files are saved. And you can see here, I have the four files that our system just saved. The TI underscore VBH, Docs Aggressive, Conservative, and same thing for our VBD studies here. So if I click open, now if I were to search for each of those, you'll see that I have both of those files loaded on. And the symbols that we did that for were the first four. So let's come into say Gilead, for example. We've been talking about Gilead a little bit more. I have Gilead loaded on. We have the daily models loaded on. If we come into something like a two minute time frame chart, we can now see the models inside of our platform. And that's being powered by the two indicator files that I just imported in. So that's what these checkboxes allow you to do. They allow you to go from symbol to thinkorswim files very easily to analyze the symbols you want to in more detail. This is useful primarily if you want to use these models to place your trades, but if speed is something you're focused on, it's really much faster to just click the symbol which then opens up both the daily and the hourly models with the aggressive and the conservative ready to go. No need to fuss with imports or anything else. So that's how you use the live scanner and how you can use it to pick and choose and make it work for your particular trading style. One more time, let me give you a quick summary. If you're a trend trader, use the trend analysis filters to find trades in which you're trading with the trend. If you're a bit more advanced, you can layer on the counter trend to find some really nice setups like the one in Kraft Heinz. That's a great segue to help one more time reemphasize, don't ignore the stop hits. That's a great place to oftentimes find trades in which you get to skew your risk to reward on your side. There's lots of columns on the scanner, all designed to help you find trades that work for your trading style. If you like volatility, you'd be focused on places where you have greater than usual relative volatility, if you like to find increasing volatility, you might be looking at where the trend has muted volatility and you're looking for that volatility to increase and you want to capitalize before it does. Lots of ways to think about that. You might be looking at places where the volatility is very much in line with what we're typically used to seeing and ignore places where that volatility is greater than usual if you don't like trading too much volatility. So again, pick and choose, make the scanner work for you and that will allow you to narrow down the trades to a handful of symbols that you can actually focus on and profit from every single day. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make sense of these charts here. How can you understand all of this information, read the models, make sense of these three charts, and even make sense of the recent performance here to get a quick view of which trades you want to focus on. I'll see you in the next video.